Hello. Um, if you're not new to my channel, then by now you're probably aware of my plant problem. It's taking over the house. It all started when I really got into minimalism and I got rid of heaps of stuff, but then my place felt so empty and I found that plants started to bring that life and that relaxation back into the space. I feel like a room with greenery in it makes me feel calm and the act of taking care of the plants itself is brilliant for your mindfulness. I'd also like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I will tell you guys more about them at the end of the video but for now let's talk some more about plants. So I did a plant video a little while ago which I'll link up here and probably in the description box which was more like, you know, how to pick the right plants for your space and some suggestions, some of my favorite ones. Um, but today I wanted to talk through some tips to help you make them thrive in your home. The first thing that I wanted to talk about is forcing growth with a plant. And to do that, we're going to trim and we're going to propagate. So propagation is where you create new little baby plants out of the plants that you already have. And trust me, it becomes a problem. <laughs> If you find that you look at your plants and they're looking a little bit leggy, which is where the stems are growing, but they're bare from leaves, it might be a look that you want to go for. I feel like in some cases it can look cool, but other times you might want to have your plant looking more full because it can just look a little bit more healthy and less untidy. But when it comes to plants, there's, there's really no rules. If you want them to go, grow long and thin and like strands and like wrap them around a window, go nuts. If you want them to be like thicker and more put together, do it that way. You can style them different ways. And I'll show you some examples as well. I have some monsteras that look like this and some monsteras that look like this. So you can set them up however you like. Now, when you trim your plant or when you take off cuttings for propagation, your plant is going to sprout out a new shoot or a new stem at the site that you've made that cut. It's not going to come out in the exact same way. It's more likely to come out from the side, but it can help encourage new growth, particularly if you have plants in a lower light area. So when you're pruning, you always want to prune just above a node of a plant. This is the area where a leaf or a branch meets a stem. These are really, really obvious in plants like pothos, you can see them sticking off. So I'll, I'll show you an example of one of those. These nodes have buds which can sprout again once the plant has been cut. Obviously, if you are trimming a plant, try not to cut everything off. But, you know, sometimes depending on the kind of plant, you can get pretty aggressive with it and you can take a lot of the leaves off. You've just got to make sure that you leave some there so they can still photosynthesize. Another thing that you can do is combine multiple plants into one pot. This will make it look like you're some kind of growing genius and you just have amazing luscious plants. So I'm just gonna make uh, a little bit of room in the soil, obviously. There's only one guy in here. You can see he's got a really good healthy root system. So this is a really simple hack to make your plant look much healthier with minimal effort. You just want to make sure that both plants that you're putting into the one container have a really good root system. It works better if you've already established both plants and then you combine them together. But of course, if you propagate little cuttings and trimmings, you can include them too. Now to encourage growth, particularly on plants that need to get really tall or on plants that are climbers, we want to give them some support. You've probably seen typical stakes like this. You can get or make moss totems, you can use a plank of wood, you can use the standard wooden delf, or if you wanna encourage your plant to sort of grow up a wall, you can use clear hooks. I use these command strip hooks because they're render friendly, you can take them off without damaging the paint later. Most climbing plants will want to have support. You'll see that they will grow bigger leaves and they'll grow much stronger if they're given something to climb up and around. So a lot of you are probably familiar with this plant. This is a pothos. This bedroom's not the highest light. It's, you know, reasonably low, but this plant's still doing pretty well. But these are the size of the leaves. They're pretty small, and I'll show you that compared to a larger one. Here's an example of a pothos on a totem. So it's almost unrecognizable. 
common nickname is a Swiss cheese plant. Um, as you can see, this one has just been growing out of a pot trailing down. It's not in the highest light area, so it's a bit leggy and the leaves are really small. And now we'll compare that to one that is right near a bright window and it's on a totem. Like, it's so much more supported. It's got a large amount of light in this area and it is just thriving. Now, another easy way to benefit your plants is to give them more light. So obviously plants are gonna tolerate low light, but they're going to do better with more. And by more, I don't mean just bright burning light all day long. I mean that lovely indirect sunlight. So there's gonna be three main factors that determine your lighting. Firstly, how far is the plant from a window? Is it right up against it? Is it a few meters away? Because you've got to remember that light falls off. Next, which direction is your window facing? Because different directions are gonna determine different kinds of sunlight throughout the day. And then three, what's in front of the window? Is there like a sheer curtain over the top of it? Which, you know what, by the way, on a west facing window, that can work quite well. Or are there plants outside? Is there a building next door? Anything like that is gonna affect the type of light which is coming in. Today might be a bad example because it's very rainy and very dark. This is one of my north facing windows. So we have a few little north facing windows. If you're in the northern hemisphere, your north facing windows are going to have the weakest light intensity and they're going to have a lot of shade throughout the day. If you're in the southern hemisphere, however, the north window is going to get the most amount of sun all day. But I do have like further away, lots of trees and things in the direction of this window. And my other north windows, which are on like that side of the building, have other buildings nearby. So for me, the light it isn't as intense. This is one of my east facing windows. So most of our house is positioned southeast. East facing windows are gonna give you a moderate amount of light. So it's not gonna to be too harsh and you're probably not gonna have any afternoon light coming in. So I find it's the perfect amount of light for plants that love that morning light or like to have bright indirect light for a fair amount of the day. We don't have any cover over our patio area there. So it leads us to get pretty clear light most of the day through these windows. And as a side note, I don't have any west facing windows. West facing windows are going to give you some pretty harsh sunlight, particularly in the summer months. So if you live somewhere that's quite warm, you might find that if you have plants too close to the window and it's west facing, they'll get a little bit sunburnt. Okay, and this is one of our south facing windows. So the other one is in our bedroom, which is directly downstairs and in Mitch's office. So this light, if you're in the southern hemisphere, your southern light is going to be fairly weak. Like it's not going to have a high intensity to it. If you're in the northern hemisphere, the southern light is going to give you the most bright indirect light all day long. Now, something to note, if you are in the southern hemisphere of the world, um, make sure that during winter your plants are getting enough light. So it might even mean moving them a little bit closer to the window because the light intensity and the light duration does drop in the winter months. Feed your plants and you don't have to just do this in spring I like to really go around and look at them and see who's growing and who's not if they're growing I'm going to make sure to feed them if they're starting to get a little sprout I just make sure that they get a little bit of food not too often every few months is totally okay there are three main things which I like to use for food for my plants so I'll use diluted fish emulsion which yes it is a little bit smelly but you're diluting it compost now you can use both the liquid and you can use processed compost mulch itself um, so compost is slower releasing and you want to put it in the soil or if you have the compost liquid you can dilute that in water so I'm talking like a capful to a liter of water you really don't need much and don't pour it straight on the plants as is make sure to dilute it and I also like to use worm castings from my worm farm so in order for your plants to look their best you're going to want to fertilize them as plants grow yes they photosynthesize but you've got to remember they're also taking up nutrients from the soil so if you have a plant that's been sitting in the same pot for years and years and years and you're finding that the growth is getting a bit stagnant and maybe the roots are overtaking the pot, it's time to upgrade, put it into a new one, put some slow releasing fertilizer like compost in there, as well as some fresh soil. So many soils already have fertilizer in them.
Now this is something that I feel like a lot of people forget to do, especially if you live near like a road or a construction site or something, you want to be dusting the leaves of your plants. I think we all know by now plants photosynthesize, they use sunlight to make some of their food. So cleaning your plant is going to help them and plus it just makes them look so much better. You'll see the difference here when I'm cleaning some of my monstera leaves. Now how you do this is up to you, um, but I like to use two different methods. I'll either use Castile soap, just a little bit, diluted in water. I'm talking like a quarter of a teaspoon into a watering can. Or you can use white oil. So this is sold also as like an insect killer and a leaf shine. It kind of does both. And I like to take a cloth and wipe the leaves with the white oil. If you're using the Castile soap mixed in with water, do not use hot water and do not use freezing cold water. You want it just at a mild temperature. If the water's too hot or too cold, it can injure your plant's leaves. Now your plants are going to want to grow towards the light. Look at that. They're all facing the window. So you've got to remember to rotate them so they grow evenly. Otherwise you'll probably find that the plant starts to grow lopsided towards the direction of the light. Okay, my next tip is to help with the thickness and density of the plant. So see this one, how it's just got a few little bits here and that is simply like one node coming into the soil which is supporting all of that. So as this starts to grow, it's probably going to start to look a bit thinner on top and not so thick. This is a different variegation of the same plant. See how many nodes are in the soil here? I'm just dropping soil all over my table, goddamn. But the thickness of that compared to that is very different. So common advice that I've seen is for people they say, oh, you know, just take a little snip of it and like put it straight in the soil and it will grow. But sometimes these cuttings don't always take. And if we do cut this plant, like let's say we cut it here, it's still only gonna sprout out one extra vine of growth. It's not gonna thicken it at all where, you know, relying on the cutting to thicken it. So what I'm gonna do instead is take this long piece of growth. See how it's got all these nodes on it. I'm actually gonna pin these nodes down into the soil. So the way I'm gonna do that is take some pretty standard bobby pins, these ones, and you don't wanna really strangle the plant. So you're just going to loosen them a little bit. So let's pull it apart. That's a lot better. Now, this is great to do as well if you have a plant which you notice is getting quite leggy. So if it's getting a long stem and it doesn't have any leaf growth on the top. So what we're gonna do is wrap it around. See how we've got all this space in the soil. This plant doesn't because it's so thick, but we've got all this space in the soil. So we're gonna wrap it around and make sure the nodes here are pointing down. And yes, the plant will look shorter for a while, but that's fine. So we're just gonna take that, that bobby pin and press it down into the soil. Now when nodes come into contact with the soil like this, they have potential to root and then create new growth. So you can see already that's looking a lot more dense than it was before. And now all these nodes that are facing and like pressed into the soil, they have the potential to grow some more roots. So as this plant continues to grow, it looks much thicker. And now keep in mind, you don't always have to do that. Like you don't have to have them looking thick like this. Like if you want something like a trailing plant or you want it to look more leggy, you can do that too. And you can let it grow like that. There's no rules. Now this one is one of my favorite ones. I get DMs all the time asking, how do you get rid of gnats? How do you stop gnats from being in the house? And especially when you have like, this is one room of my house. So when you have a lot of plants, like there is the potential for bugs to be there. Firstly, make sure that your plants aren't just sitting in water. They're not really gonna like that anyway. So if you've watered something, take the drip tray a few hours later, empty it out and make sure that nothing is too soggy. Gnats seem to like to go into moist soil as the larvae feed off the fungus which grows in moist soil. And this is it, this is the tip. The tip is not getting rid of the water, obviously. Um, Ceylon cinnamon. Ceylon cinnamon is true cinnamon. So if you're going into the supermarket, don't just get the regular cinnamon in the spice section. 
I know it's usually at health food stores, like you have to go out of your way to find it usually, but I buy like a big bag from the health food store. Um, it's called Ceylon Cinnamon or True Cinnamon, and you can actually sprinkle this on top of the soil. So you don't want to mix it all the way through, you just want to sprinkle it on top of the soil and it will deter the gnats from laying their eggs in there. It'll help a little bit with drying off the soil and it will help to kill any of the fungus that the larvae like to feed on. So I like to do this in my bigger plants, like I have this one Monstera which is huge, the pot, I, I need to weigh it, but it is definitely over 50 kilos, perhaps below 70 kilos. It's really heavy, so there's a lot of soil, so there's a lot of chance for that soil to stay moist. So I have to make sure that every couple of weeks I'm going and putting cinnamon on top of the soil just to deter the gnats. If you do this regularly to your big plants, you won't have a problem with them. Now we're going to clear up the dead leaves. I feel like I've seen advice before, which is like, leave the dead leaves on the soil because the plant will use it. The plants already use the nutrient from that leaf. As the leaf turns yellow and it starts to die off, the minerals are being reabsorbed into the plant already. When it's gone brown and it's crispy, you can either take it off at that point or if it's dropped into the soil, take it away from the soil. It's not mulch. It doesn't have the ability to aerate and break down like it would outside. Outside there's so many little insects and things which are going to eat that and then they're going to excrete that and that's what's going to help create mulch for the soil. It's not the dead leaf itself. And the reason I'm saying this is because if you leave all the dead leaves on the soil, you're going to attract bugs. And I know so many of you don't want bugs in your plants because I get messages about it all the time. So clean them up, make sure there's no dead leaves sitting on top of the soil. And I wanted to thank Squarespace again for allowing me to bring you guys today's video. So I've been using Squarespace for around six years now to host both my websites, both the Eat, Run, Lift blog and my lifestyle blog, which is rachelost.me. I find the platform incredibly easy to use. Look how simple it is to format and make a lovely blog post. So they've got heaps of different features that you can use, such as the drag and drop. You can duplicate your posts so that you can keep a similar format throughout everything on your blog. And as well as that, they've already got heaps of different templates that you can use to make sure that your branding looks sleek and professional. So if you're someone who has a blog or you're looking at starting a website or something for e-commerce, check out Squarespace. It's got such simple solutions and I will give you guys a 10% discount. So just jump onto that URL that's on the screen or I'll also leave it linked in the description box and you'll get 10% off your first Squarespace purchase. So give it a go today. It is so simple to use. I hope you found some of these helpful. Um, if you want more looks at my plants, I post them all the time on my Instagram story, so jump on over to my Instagram, which is at Rachel Lust. Obviously, I'm not a plant channel, I'm not a plant expert, but I have been into them for quite a while. These are tips which I've found incredibly useful, so I thought maybe you could apply them as well. If you're still here, leave me a comment. How many plants do you have? I don't even know anymore. I'm pretty sure the number is like over 100. I've lost count. That's okay. <laughs> But I hope you guys are well and I hope you're taking some time to enjoy your plants and be mindful and look after them and enjoy yourself. I'll catch up with you guys in my next video or over on Instagram if you want to catch me there. Bye!